Okay, now we're going to uh, find the inverse of a function. What do you think? You ready? Yep. Let's do it. Okay, this is how you find the inverse of a function. Okay, to find the inverse of a function, first use the standard like equation notation y equals instead of f of x. You're used to that, aren't you? Yeah. Seeing the y equals stuff. Then change every x to a y and every y to an x. You just change them, and then you solve for y. Like, let's go ahead and do this example here. It says, find the inverse of this function, f of x equals x over 6 plus 2. Now, you might be able to think what the inverse of this function is right off the top of your head. Like, for example, right now, in the order of things, we take a number, we divide by 6, then we add 2. So, the inverse of that would be to do what first? Any ideas? Take the x minus 2, divide, multiply by 6. That's it. Yeah, that's doing the opposite things in the opposite order. Now, let's say you couldn't get that off the top, or it might be a, a tougher one like down here with example four. Then what you do is, first of all, write this with the y equals rather than f of x equals. So we say y equals x over 6 plus 2. Now change every x to a y and every y to an x. So instead of having y equals x over 6 plus 2, we have x equals y over 6 plus 2. So we just switch the x and y's. Okay with that? Yeah. Okay, now we got to solve this for y. So the first thing you may do is subtract 2 from both sides to get x minus 2 equals y over 6, and then to get rid of the divide by 6, you multiply both sides by 6 to get y equals 6 times x times the quantity x minus 2. Now that would be the inverse function right there. Now there's a special notation to say inverse function, and it's this right here, f with a little negative 1. Now you've maybe heard before that negative exponent means reciprocate it or, or flip flip the base or whatever, but here, when you have f raised to the negative 1, it's read at the inverse function of x, and it doesn't mean flip it or anything. It just means that you found the function that does the opposite of the original function. Okay, want, ready for a tough one? Yeah. Okay, here comes a tough one. This problem, we're supposed to find the inverse. Now, we got a cube root. What do you think the opposite of cube root is? Cube. That's it. The same way like the opposite of square root would be what? Square? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's it. How about what's the opposite of raise it to the fifth power? A quadric? Well, it would be fifth root. Fifth root. Fifth root, yeah. Okay, so let's find the inverse of this function. So the first thing we're going to do is replace the f of x with a what? Uh, f of y? Uh, no, we're going to write it with y equals instead of f of x equals. So we'll say y equals this stuff. Now we replace every x with a what? Y. And replace the Y with a? X. Mm -hmm. And I did that right here. Now we got to solve this thing for, for Y. Okay, so there's some algebra here. First thing you would do is multiply by 5 to get rid of that divide by 5. And that would give me 5X equals that stuff on top. Now i got to get rid of the cube root. So how do I get rid of the cube root? Cube it? Mm -hmm. So cube both sides. The cubing of this cube root will eliminate the cube root and just give me 2Y plus 3. And i got to do that to the other side too. It gives me 5X cubed. Now, what's your next step? Get rid of the what here? 3. Mm -hmm. Yep, subtract 3 from both sides, and that will give me 5x cubed minus 3 equals 2y. And finally, get rid of the 2 by what? Dividing. Yep, divide by 2. And bingo, that, that's you know what y equals now. And that would be the inverse function. So I would write f inverse of x equals this. Now, here's a tough question for you, Christopher. If I take this function right here, f inverse of x, and I composite it with the original function, right here, cube root of 2x plus 3 over 5. In other words, if I take this function and I substitute that in here for x, what do you think I'll get? x. You got it, because they're inverse functions of each other. And it means the opposite way, too. If I take this whole thing and substitute it in there for x, I will get um, x back. You know, take this whole mess of stuff, put it in there, it would be a big mess, but it's going to simplify down to x. So let's pause a second. We'll go on to the uh, next problem. Here's a little fact about inverse functions. You know, since we had to switch the x and y's to get the inverse function, then if there's a point on the original function, x1, y1, then on the inverse function, there's a point x2, y2, where x2 is this y, and y2 is that x. That's confusing, so let me show you what I mean. If the uh, one, if these points, 1, 2, and 3, 4, are points on the, on the original function, then on the inverse function, there are points 2, 1, 4, 3 on the inverse function. Because every x gets switched with the y, so 2, 1, 4, 3 would be on the inverse function. So those are important things to uh, 
to, to uh, ask no, and let's go ahead and take a look at the graphs of these things. Okay, here are two functions that are inverses of each other, and you could tell because this one we multiply by 2, then subtract 10, and here we add 10, then divide by 2. So they're clearly inverse functions without even working it out, but you could composite them together if you wanted to. And what I did is I went to the Excel sheet, and I went to the, uh, uh, the sheet called AnyGraph, and um, I'll show you that sheet here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at what these uh, graphs look like of these inverse functions, okay? Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and graph um, these two functions. They're inverses of each other. First of all, let's go ahead and graph um, f of x equals 2x minus 10. Now, I'm going to graph at least two, two functions on the same graph, and the best sheet to do that on is the any graph sheet. So I'm going to graph 2x minus 10. So I'm going to go to the Excel sheet, go to the any graph sheet, and right here, in this cell B10, I'm going to type equals, and I'm trying to remember what that function was. I think it was 2x, but we'll have to say times in between. 2x, what was it minus 10? Do you remember? I think it was minus 10. Okay, let's do that. Then hit enter, and then you just scroll down and click the button that says click here to get graph. So I'll do that, and it's working on it. Well, okay, and we'll graph this thing from uh, negative 10 to 20. You could graph it whatever range you like, but I want to be able to show you a feature of inverse functions. So there it is, graph from negative 10 to 20. Now I'm going to go over here and graph the uh, inverse function, and that function was equals parentheses, what was it, x plus 10? x plus 10 over 2. Over 2. Okay, so you just type it in like this. Over 2, right? Hit enter. Yep. And then we go down and click the... Um, the button that says click here to get graph and it's okay and that's um, I set the same uh, start and end for that negative 10 to 20 and if I go out here I can see both of these graphs okay now this may not look special to you at all Christopher right? Don't, it looks like average graph. Average graph okay now I want to graph a third graph and that third graph is just y equals x so right here I'm just going to type equals x hit enter and we'll scroll down and click the get here to click here to get graph. Okay, I just graphed the line y equals x, and I have it set to go for the same range, negative 10 to 20. Now, if I scroll to the right, I can see all three graphs. Okay, I think this was the original function, this is the inverse function, and this is the line y equals x. Well, y equals x is actually a 45 degree line, and it doesn't look like 45 degrees. It looks like less than that because this goes clear up to 40, and this doesn't go as much. But there's something going on here with these lines. Can you see anything that's special about, let's say, the red line in relationship to the black line? Anything special there at all, Chris? They all hit the same spot. They all hit the same spot, yep. In fact, they hit right here at 1010. 10. In fact, every point on this blue line is going to be the, the same. It's y equals x, so it's going to go through points like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, all the way to 2020 20 up here. But take a look at this. As this red line moves away from that y equals x line, okay, as this moves away and gets farther away from it this way, what does this black line do? Get farther away? The, op the opposite way. And it, like if we back it up here, as this goes farther away this way, the red line gets farther away this way, right? So what it is is that this is called a graph, an inverse function is a mirror image through this line, through this 45 degree line. So if you know what the function looks like, then the inverse function will be a mirror image through this line. It's like, think of this blue line as being a mirror, okay? Then if I'm walking on this black line, okay, if I'm walking on this black line, and this is a big long mirror, this blue line, then as I walk and I get closer to the mirror, what will my image do? Get closer? Right. Okay, so it gets closer, I get, I get closer, I get closer, my image, my reflection gets closer and closer until right here when I'm d doing what? I am touching the mirror, right? Yeah. Now, after that point goes beyond what we can do with a mirror because what do I do at this point? I go through the mirror. Through the mirror. You become the shadow. Right. And what does the what does your mirror image become? You become you. Right. And that's what what a uh, it's what the inverse function does. It is a mirror image through this line y equals x, and that's a, an important feature for that. So we'll stop right there.